Hi there! In this video I want to show you how to use Staplet for descriptive statistics. So you can use this for your homework um, and uh, assignments or any other um, statistical analysis you might be doing. So we are right now doing descriptive statistics so we're going to click on one variable, uh, one quantitative variable, single group, and often you'll just have this link directly from our class but just in case you're at staplet.com. You're going to click on that and it looks like this. This will label your graph, which is great. So put a variable name with the units in there and it will put the label on for you. Usually we're going to be putting in raw data. That's what we have, but we could also, we might have some other information there. Um, and then this is where we put our data. So I'm going to pull from a MyOpenMath assignment. This is, uh, I'm going to copy from this question. So I'm just going to select all this data. To the bottom, hit Control C, copy or Command C if you're on a Mac. Paste it right in there, and you'll see we have the numbers with spaces in between. Also, I want to see if there's a variable name, so I'm going to scroll down here. We don't really have a context for this question, but they are saying length in centimeters, so we don't know length in what, but if we did know, we could put that in length of something in centimeters. Um, I don't know what we would measure. Our length in centimeters for um, variable names. So I'm going to say length. I guess the variable name is length, but if we knew the context of what these lengths were, we could put that in. Okay, then we've got our variable name and our data. So we put begin analysis and we see a graph and our summary statistics right here. So maybe all you need are the summary statistics. What's the mean or standard deviation? or any part of the five number summary, or n, that's the number of data points we have. So um, if so, that's, that's all you have to do right there. But if you're trying to get a graph, the dot plot is the default. So that comes up there. Usually though, we might want a histogram. So here's our histogram. And um, you can choose frequency or relative frequency. Notice it changes that to percentage as well, proportions, the decimal, decimal of the percentage. Just going to keep it at frequency for now. And then you can also change the bin width, or these are called interval width or class width. It'll even pop it up right there when I hover over it. Um, so you might notice this looks a little different than in this question. See how they have a bin width of 50 right here? So if I change this to 50 and hit enter, now it looks just like that one, except just a different scale on the, um, they've got more numbers labeled here. Um, I think 20 actually looked pretty nice. I'm going to change that. Or you could do reset, and it resets back to the original. Um, and then let's say we want to add a box plot to that. Click on this show box plot, and it puts it right up there. You don't even have to try to get the scale the same because um, it does that for you. And here's our minimum. You can see that that would be in that lowest bin, and that minimum is 278.3, so it makes sense. That means a fence is somewhere right in here. Okay, so you've got your graph. Now let's say you want to get this into an assignment or a test box or anything like that. So I'm going to use the snipping tool for that. And, um, or you can do like a print screen or a screenshot, anything like that. I've got mine right here. You could type snip into the little Windows uh, search, search bar. Um, I'm going to hit new. And then this is nice because you can select the area you want. And usually I don't want all that stuff up at the top. I just want graphs and summary statistics. There we go. So now I've got a nice little image I can paste into a document. Save it and import it to a document. Okay, so I hope that helps you get your descriptive statistics and um, do your homework. There's, oh, there's one other thing I want to show you. Close this for a second. I want to show you just a different question where this input is in a, a, a matrix or a rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of it and put Control C. I've tried this out with all different shapes, rows, columns, um, rectangles. If I want to do another one, I'm just going to hit reset everything. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. And I will skip the variable name. This time, but notice how I do have all, all those numbers with a space in between. 
And as a double check, you want to always check your n. That's how many numbers it's reading. So you want to make sure that's the same. So if I go back to my question, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 6 times 4 is 24. So I know that I have, it's reading all 24 numbers. If it said something like 6 or 8 or something funky, then I would want to go back and double check data. So I found that this seems to be very good at um, importing the data in, into this little spot, and then you can do whatever you need to with it. And we're not going to do inference right now. We might do that later on. So I hope that helps, and I'll see you in the next video.